And I think he's better than Victor Wamba Mama or whatever okay. his name is. Wamba Yama Mama. Wamba Yama Bo Bo? Yes. Bo, Bo, oh. Bo has better physical talent and ready to play in the NBA right now than Victor is. What can Victor Wembanyama do that Ball Ball can't? That is the question I see all over social media. But how is the number one pick in the draft being compared to a fourth year player who was just cut from one of the NBA's worst teams? I'll show you why. Tweets like this. I can't lie, they do share a lot in common. They are both the type of player the NBA obsesses over. The demigod point centers who do things on the court you only ever see on NBA 2K. Wemby is 7 foot 5, but Bol Bol is 7 foot 3. Wemby weighs 190 pounds, Bol Bol weighs 220 pounds. Wemby can handle the ball like a guard, Bol Bol can do that too. Wemby's jump shot is unstoppable because he's so tall he just shoots over the defenders. Bol Bol is tall enough to do that as well. Wemby can block shots in the paint and out on the perimeter. Ball Ball can too. Wemby can grab a rebound, go coast to coast and throw it down in traffic. Ball Ball can do that too. So why is Wembenyama a generational prospect while Ball Ball is fighting for his NBA career? Everyone want Wemby, meanwhile nobody wanted Ball Ball. Let's really break it down and talk about it. Ball Ball is the son of Manut Ball, one of, if not the original NBA unicorn. If I were to show you his highlights, you'd think he was much better than he was. <laughs> He's got six threes this half. In 10 seasons in the NBA, Manut played 624 games. In around 20 minutes a night, he averaged 2.6 points, 4.2 rebounds, and 3.3 blocks per game. I know. How you 7-6, averaging just 4 rebounds a game. Manute Ball is as much a myth as he is a legend. So 20 years later when his son, Ball Ball, burst onto the high school basketball scene, he was always one to keep an eye on. Ball Ball was a high school sensation. Unlike his father, who started hooping at who knows how old, Ball Ball was at Matter Day, one of the top schools in America, and he was one of the best players in the country. He was a McDonald's All-American, 5-star prospect, and ranked 4th in the nation by ESPN. But Ball Ball wasn't just a high school star whose name was bigger than his game. At Oregon, in college, he dominated, averaging 21 points, 9.6 rebounds, 3.3 blocks. He shot 56% from the field, 52% from 3-point range, and 75% from the free throw line. Numbers that if you put side by side with Wemby last season in France at the same age, are actually pretty comparable. Before we get carried away, let's go beyond the numbers. Victor Wembanyama played professionally in the 8th best basketball league in the world. So Wemby faced tougher competition and played against grown men instead of college kids. Wembanyama's season was historic. He was rookie of the year. Defensive Player of the Year, led the league in scoring, was All-Star Game MVP, League MVP, and he led his team to the finals at 19 years old. Wemby has played internationally with France, he's played Euroleague and shown that he can hold his own with the best players outside of the NBA. And most importantly, he was durable. He played 32 minutes a night and 34 games last season. Ball Ball in college did average 30 minutes a night also, but he played just 9 games before suffering a season ending injury. And because of this, he fell further in the draft than any prospect I've ever seen. Don't forget, prior to this injury, Ball was projected to be the third pick behind Zion Williamson and RJ Barrett. He was supposed to be drafted ahead of all stars Ja Moran and Darius Garland. 7 footers with foot injuries has always been a huge red flag. But it didn't stop Joel Embiid, who missed his first two seasons in the NBA, from being picked third and going on to become an MVP. What it did stop was Ball Ball being a top draft pick, and he fell all the way to the second round with a 44th pick, which stunned the basketball world. Falling this far in the draft changed the trajectory of Ball Ball's career. In reality, second rounders get treated differently to first round and lottery picks. 
and what he became was a long-term project. He spent time in the G League and in three seasons with the Nuggets, played just 53 times. He didn't play much at all and when he did, it wasn't for long. So it was no surprise that his averages were underwhelming. Despite this, he did show flashes of greatness with plays like this that made for viral social media content. That's their best free throw shooting percentage. Bowl oh. with the block in 30 years. Now that Daniels. Was such Bowl. 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 In 2022, Bowl Bowl was traded to the Orlando Magic, and this is what we're going to focus on. Because with the Magic, a rebuilding team, Ball Ball finally got the opportunity to show what he can do. The 2022-23 season was essentially his rookie year. The Nuggets were a contending team and Nikola Jokic, the best centre in basketball, played his position. They didn't have time for Ball Ball to develop. The Magic did. Can you share what you think for him? Yes, if you dunk one more time on me, I'm going to F him. <laughs> and if he was drafted in the lottery in 2019, he'd have been in a situation like this. In his first and only season, he exceeded everyone's expectations. He recorded a career-high 26 points, alongside 12 rebounds and 3 blocks against the Timberwolves. But it wasn't just one game. Nah, Ball did this regularly over a decent sample size. Let's break down the numbers. He scored 20 plus points, six times. He scored in double figures 23 times. He started 32 consecutive games in which he averaged 12.5 points, 7.3 rebounds and 1.4 blocks. These numbers put him in contention to be the NBA's most improved player. So what happened? Why after showing so much promise was Ball Ball released from the Magic just a few months later? He wasn't even traded. Nah, they released him. Well, Ball Ball failed to sustain this level of play for the entire season, and his play fell off hard the second half of the season. Let's put the numbers side by side. As you can see, the Ball Ball we saw through October to December was different than the Ball we got in 2023. He was relegated from the starting lineup, and things got worse. Let's make no mistake about it, the decision to wave Ball Ball shocked the basketball world. But the Orlando Magic are at a point now where they want to compete. And they didn't see Ball Ball as a player that can contribute to winning right now. Whether you agree or disagree with that assessment, that's why he was cut and is now with the Phoenix Suns. Before we talk about that fit and what kind of player he needs to be to survive in Phoenix, let's go back to the title of the video. What can Wemby do that Ball Ball can't? Let's first talk about what they can both do. They are super tall players with guard-like skills who can guard in and out of the paint. People rave about Victor's ability to block shots on the perimeter. Well, Ball Ball has shown the ability to do this too. For what he lacks in speed, he makes up for in length. While Ball Ball is an above average shot blocker, Victor almost averaged double the blocks per game than Ball did. People will say that's because of more playing time, but even per 36 minutes, Victor still averaged more. So while Ball has the physical tools of Wembenyama, they are worlds apart in terms of impact defensively. Wembenyama will be a transcendent defensive player from day one, and it's as much about his defensive awareness and IQ as it is his length and wingspan. Victor understands defensive schemes, Ball Ball doesn't, and despite having tremendous upside on that side of the floor, Ball can sometimes be a complete liability defensively. There is something to be said about his defensive presence though. Luka Doncic described matching up against Ball Ball like shooting over a skyscraper. He has the potential, and if he buys in, he can become a great defender in this league. People also assume that if you're tall, you're automatically a great rebounder. That isn't the case at all. Ball Ball averaged just 5.8 rebounds per game last season. Victor averaged 10 plus. Again, almost double. It isn't just about height. Wemby knows how to box out. Ball Ball doesn't. The majority of his rebounds are uncontested. And of all NBA players above 7 feet, Ball's 23% contested rebound percentage is the lowest in the NBA. 
Bol Bol's talent is undeniable. He is 23 years old and the potential is off the charts. He is incredibly skilled. He does fit the unicorn mold. But for every amazing highlight you see on Twitter, there's a terrible one that doesn't get posted. Victor Wembanyama is an elite ball handler for his height. So is Bol Bol. The difference is, Wemby is a significantly better passer. I need not go into detail, you all saw these passes at Summer League. Ball Ball on the other hand is an unwilling passer. He averaged almost 2 turnovers for every assist last season. He can handle the ball, he is good at it, but he does too much. He forces the issue, Wemby doesn't do that. Wemby can play on the perimeter like a wing at times, but that isn't his entire game, he is a big man. Ball Ball is not a big man, he is a wing who does as much bad as he does good. Ball shoots 71% in the paint. He was one of the best finishers around the rim for his position last season. However, less than half of his shot attempts were at the rim. 60% of his shots were either in the mid-range or from free. And the efficiency was poor. See, when you look at both of their three-point percentages, you will see they are pretty similar and assume that they are comparable as shooters. But when you look deeper, you'll realise that Bobo's shooting splits are alarmingly bad. He shot 13% from the right corner and 8% from the left wing. 18% on corner threes and on all catch and shoot attempts, Bo shot just 28%, which is unacceptable for a power forward in today's NBA. Victor shot 33% on catch and shoot threes. It was his shooting off the dribble at 21%, that lowered his percentage. Bear in mind, Victor did this as the number one option on a smaller court with less spacing. Wemby also shoots a significantly higher percentage at the free throw line, which is always a huge indicator of a player's shooting potential. He has a better shooting form, quicker release, and although Wemby isn't all there as a shooter just yet, he's still better than Ball Ball in this area. Wembenyama is a better post player simply because Ball Ball's post game is non-existent. Wemby may struggle to body NBA big men down low, but he has an answer to that already. He plans to bring back the famous skyhook, the most unstoppable move in NBA history. I've been working a little bit on, the, on my skyhook, you know, Kareem skyhook, and hopefully someday it can be a weapon to add. To put it bluntly, whatever Ball Ball can do, Victor Wembenyama can do better. But just because Wemby is great doesn't mean Ball Ball isn't good. And the biggest difference between the two players isn't that Wemby is a few inches taller or has a slightly bigger wingspan. It's mostly upstairs, in the head. The difference between Wemby and all these other unicorns is his understanding of the game. So many of these raw unicorn-like players can do all the hard things but don't do the little things. Whereas Wemby does the little things great, he knows his limitations, he plays to his strengths, Ball Ball plays to his weaknesses, he wants to be this ISO wing scorer, he thinks he's Kevin Durant, and maybe it won't be until he plays alongside KD in Phoenix that he realises he isn't that guy. Another considerable difference between the two is attitude. Gilbert Arenas said this about Ball Ball. What do you think Bo Bo will bring to this side squad? The same thing he's been bringing to every other team. Disappointment. What do I expect? I expect failure. But his talent? Unstoppable talent. But he ain't using it. Man. Yeah. We know what kind of talent Bo Bo has. And we see the production. The seven foot lottery pick average nine. Let's f*** out of here. Now this isn't the first time Bo's approach has been criticised. His work ethic and body language have been questioned since his time in Denver. I am in no place to comment on the validity of these claims, but what I will say is that nobody says the same thing about Wembenyama. Wemby is already the ultimate professional, 100% dedicated to his craft and has shown a real willingness to learn and improve. Truth be told, the Wembenyama Ball Ball comparison is Twitter talk. In real life, they don't compare. What's more important than this comparison is Ball Ball becoming the best player he can be because for a player of his talent, the sky is the limit. So let's talk about the latest move. Ball Ball just signed a one year prove it deal with the Phoenix Suns in free agency. And there really wasn't much demand among NBA teams for his services. 
which is unfair, last season was basically Ball Ball's rookie season. He is going into year 5 and has played fewer NBA minutes than lottery picks from last year's draft. Try looking at Ball Ball from that perspective. Just imagine he was drafted in the lottery in 2022 like he was supposed to be in 2019 before his injury. He plays his first season in Orlando, averages 9.1 points, 5.8 rebounds and 1.2 blocks in around 20 minutes a game. Best believe the conversation regarding Ball Ball would be a lot different. Unfortunately, that is a hypothetical. We can't dwell on what could have or even should have been in an ideal world. In reality, he isn't a lottery pick. He's going into his fifth year, having been traded several times already. This really may be it for Ball Ball. He has to make it work in Phoenix. And the Suns are getting a low risk, high reward player. Boom or bust, they are taking a chance on Ball Ball, not because of the reasons we've gone over. Primarily because he's a cheap pickup with high upside for a top heavy team paying $161 million a season for 4 players. Kevin Durant vouches for Ball Ball as well and I'm sure that played into his favour. The Suns simply need more depth. They traded it all to get KD and Bradley Beal. What they need is filler guys to fill up the rotation and contribute. Ball Ball isn't in Orlando anymore. The stakes are high, he is on a contending team that wants to win an NBA championship this season. They aren't going to wait on him, they aren't going to give him freedom to develop, they need him to have a role and make the team better immediately. Ball Ball can have an impact, but he needs to start playing to his strengths. The Suns don't need an ISO wing scorer, they have the best ISO scorers in the NBA. What they need is a complementary piece. If Ball Ball can play off the ball, hit catch and shoot shots, be a versatile defender and score efficiently, he can be a key rotational piece on a championship team. Think about it, if he buys in, he can have a ring before Victor Wembanyama does. And that right there would make this comparison a year from now, perhaps a conversation worth revisiting. Let me ask you guys. Is there anything Wimbanyama can do that Ball Ball can't? Let me know down below in the comments. My name is DKM, if you have made it up to this point you must have enjoyed so subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and on that note it's DKM signing out until next time and peace.